Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for choosing to watch my channel and my videos exploring the incredible, wide, amazing, to me, really great world of pens. Today, we're going to take a little bit of a different journey. And you may recognize these pens. They're both Ranga pens. They're both Abahemanyu. I'm certain I'm butchering the pronunciation. This is the oversized one, which I'm very thankful to a pen viewer who um, provided me with the pen. And here's the one that I purchased a few years ago. Regular size, oversized. Oversized is definitely oversized. And we'll go into that a little bit later. But one of the main reasons why this oversize is a very interesting pen is it takes the number eight Jinhao nib units screw into the section. So we're going to explore that. Look at some other things I discovered during my exploration of Ranga and this oversized Abba Himanyu. Stay tuned. We have some sunlight coming in. It's a very interesting ebonite color. Very subtle blues and blacks with some stripes of color here and there. Hopefully the sunlight is bringing out the very subtle nuances of this very interesting hard rubber ebonite material that Ranga used to make this pen. That shows off a lot there at the end of the pen. It's just interesting. I think it's uh, amazing what uh, many people are now doing with ebonite and creating very interesting looking patterns this can definitely survive in a business environment very easily. So one question you might ask, which I wouldn't, but you might. How does the pen post? Cap takes about one turn to get off. I mean, it's a big, big pen. It feels big in the hand without that cap being on the end of the barrel. But if you want to put the cap there... You can do that. It just makes the pen really heavy, really big. It's relatively secure. Let's give you those overall dimensions in my classic style. So you can put this whole pen, big pen, grand pen, in perspective. So here you may recognize what I call Model 2. The changes that they made, thinner cap band, and we also have some gold trim. Cap comes off in less turns. We'll see that number eight nib in here. The nib unit unscrews. And yes, the uh, converter is not attached. But we'll notice something interesting about this nib unit. If we compare it to the one that is normally found in Model 1, you'll see this one has different threads in a different location in the way that it's designed. And it won't fit into the ring of pen. I don't know why these are two different nib units. About half of my newer models have this different style nib unit and some of them have the regular, what I would call the regular Jinhao design where these threads are more closer to the end of the nib collar. Both of them have that same two-tone fine nib, but keep that in mind if you want to maybe get a Ranga number eight pen. Make certain you have the older style Yovo nib units. They sell them with the Magna Carta number no. 8 nib and that costs $50 more. Here's what it looks like on their website. So the other thing you'll notice about these other number no. 8 size nib units, no chariot on that nib collar. And if we turn it around we'll see an identifying number which is a lot of times on these injection molded parts. So in case there's a quality issue, that usually indicates the mold cavity that it came out of. And usually if the mold cavity goes bad, then they only have to get rid of the number two nib. So that wouldn't happen to be the one that went bad. So again, interesting that Jin Hao has a two different nib units. My theory is 
these NIB units come from different subcontractors, different manufacturers, but yet they have to make a section with threads to accommodate them. It's a mystery. So you might ask, how big is a number eight size nib? And in the middle here, we have a Yovo nib, Franklin Christoph Yovo. And on either side of it, we have a number eight Jinhao nib. Certainly is a much larger nib, eight millimeter feet versus a six millimeter feet, hence number six and number eight size nibs. But in looking for a nib to go into the oversized Abahumanyu, I found something interesting. Let's check it out. So I put that Jinhao nib unit in the Ranga pen. And one of the things that I noticed is that the nib collar extends out beyond the section, whereas in the X159 it's flush, a little bit recessed, which I think is a better look than seeing that nib collar come out a little bit. I think it's time to ink this up and put nib to paper. So this is the ink I decided to put into the Ranga. I thought it would be a nice color, complement the color of that ebonite. Let's see how it looks on the paper. So the writing example is exactly what I expected. I've been very happy with these number eight Jinhao nibs. As you can see, it lays down a fairly wet line and I consider this Robert Oster ink to be a little bit on the dry side. So that's, that's nice to see. You're not going to get any flex or spread or anything, but it lays down a consistently nice, fine line, and it is a fine nib. Fine as in both the writing and fine as far as the line width goes. Now let's see how this steel, plain steel nib, not two-tone, from the Model 1, let's see how it writes. It's similar. It actually appears to be a little finer, but you know, a lot of that could be ink and other things. This is a Tremel purple glitter ink. It's been in the pen. I've refilled it a few times. It's worked well. I've enjoyed writing with it, and it's been in a number of letters. So here's the Abijinu, oh, terrible with the pronunciation. Here's the Grand, and here's an X159, and it is certainly much larger. In fact, I almost think the Grand is a little bit too large even for me. Certainly not something that I would enjoy with long writing sessions, but it is a unique pen, and I do enjoy it for what it is, and I don't expect it to do more than what it can do. The section, even though the X159 section is a little bit bigger diameter, I like the way it feels in my hand. Very personal preferences when it comes to how sections feel in your hand. The uh, Ranga is definitely a longer section, and we'll give you the section dimension just so you can compare the metrics. So I was impressed with the fact that Magna Carta was making a number eight nib, so I went to their website. Here's what it looks like. And I found a pen that they're selling with a number eight steel nib. And I said, let's see if we can buy the nib only. But when I did my searching on the Magna Carta website, I couldn't find it. But then I found a website called Pen World, and they didn't have it either, but they had some Magna Carta titanium nibs. I did a recent video on a CanWrite one. And I also found these CanWrite flex nibs at a very, very reasonable price. So that's interesting. I recently saw on Facebook that somebody posted that Jinhao X159 had a medium nib. 
So I broke my no new pens in 2023 and went on Amazon and ordered one. Here it is. It's shipping from China, so it'll take a while to get here, but I'll definitely let you know if I get a medium nib. But we're going to sum up everything. Mr. Crab said, I want to hold up the big pen, so I had to show him on a turntable holding up the Ranga Grand Abijumonu. I hope you enjoyed this little look at an interesting thing to do with nibs. So I'd like to ask a question. If any of you know an inexpensive, not a Yovo or Bach, number eight nib that one could buy, a lot of people are asking about them. Hopefully they would come in more than extra fine or fine. Medium broad stub would be nice. But let us know. I think it's good to take advantage of the internet community. Take advantage of my viewers, their experience, their knowledge. Let's uh, do some research. I couldn't find it, but, you know, I didn't spend a million hours trying to figure it out. But I did as much as I could. I did find other number eight nibs that are reasonably priced or hopefully reasonably priced, but couldn't find a way of buying them. So that's about it. I'd like to thank all of you for watching, taking some time out of your valuable day to spend it with me. Hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, enjoying nibs, inks, paper, all that experience that you get in the world of fountain pens. And it is a wide, wide world of fountain pens. So we're going to say this is the end. Bye. Until the next video.